Cooper MP Josh Burns. Welcome to both of you. Welcome, Patricia. Afternoon, PK. Let's talk about coronavirus because it is like, the biggest story in the world and it's uh, you know, sucking the oxygen of the political system as well. Josh, should the travel ban extend to Italy and South Korea? I mean, given their outbreaks there, why not there when the other two countries have been chosen to have um, travel bans from both China and Iran? Uh, look, I think with anything like the travel ban, these things are best left to the experts. And um, I obviously, you know, being a member of the opposition, don't have access to um, all of the information. I understand that the government have been briefing uh, the leadership of the opposition. And, and we're going to be working with the government to make sure that the government is taking the steps to protect Australians. And if that means extending the travel bans, and so be it. I, I do want to mention, though, PK, that um, in the last 24 hours on the coronavirus, we have seen people, it's obviously taken a, um, you know, a step to the next level. It's become, um, you know, it, it, day by day, it's, you know, it's getting slightly worse. And last night, the Minister for Multicultural Affairs, Jason Wood, um, got it, it, on his Facebook page, made some pretty ugly remarks about race baiting and about Asians. Um, it was ugly gutter politics. And at this time, at this difficult time, when we are talking about extending travel bans, those sorts of remarks, especially from the person who's in charge of protecting the multicultural fabric of our country, um, are really unhelpful. They're really divisive. And Scott Morrison needs to take him up on it. Uh, Jason Falinski, what did you make of those comments from your colleague? Hello, Patricia, it's just disappointing to see Labor playing politics in the middle of a crisis. Um, we saw last week that they called seven divisions during the National Security Committee hearing meeting into how to deal with coronavirus and they're at it again. When you read Jason Wood's um, comments, it is clear that he is making the point, a point that many epidemiologists have made, which is that the live food markets, especially in China, need to be carefully, more carefully regulated and monitored than they have been over the last decade and a half. We've had two major epidemics. This one could turn into a pandemic um, in the last decade and a half and um, there is a high probability and most people agree that they emanated in these live food markets in China. So okay. I don't think and, and then other people might say well what are we doing delving into the domestic politics of China? Well the answer to that question is this pandemic if it turns into a pandemic has impacts right around the world so this concerns the entire world in this interconnected world. So that's why Jason Wood make, made those comments. Sure, just to interrupt you. Sorry, Jace, Jace, Wait, Jace, 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 the right tone. Well, Patricia, if you're going to do that, why don't you read the entire post rather than just picking on one word? Was I right that the word the disgusting Party, was in it? Where the Labor Party, where the Labor Party is used, is focused on that word to make a political point rather than and misrepresent the minister, rather than the obvious point that he was making, which is that the that this the two epidemics in the last decade and a half have, in all probability, started in these live animal markets. OK, well, I want to put that to Josh Burns. I mean, why can't somebody critique the fact that these live markets have, have according to scientists, led to what we're seeing now? What's wrong with that? Because, because Jason Wood and Jason also um, on, on this program know that, that to, to raise concerns carefully and considerately, um, considerately about these sorts of markets with our Chinese counterparts is one thing. But that's not what that post was about. That post from Jason Wood was about finger pointing, it was about race baiting, it was about scapegoating, and it was about at a time when Australians are becoming fearful, it was a time when Australians are nervous, and instead of creating unity, instead of bringing Australians together, the Minister for Multicultural Affairs used words like disgusting and Asians at this time. Now, I don't believe that no, uh, Jason That's is so naive untrue. to say that is how damaging, untrue. How damaging that sort of language is right now. And the only people doing race baiting at this point are the Labor Party. And it is appalling Wrong. and you should be called out for it and you should stop while you still have the chance. OK, let's talk about something really specific because the South Australian government uh, says it wants to introduce legislation to Parliament tomorrow to strengthen laws to allow people to be detained if they're engaging in conduct that risks spreading the disease. Jason Falinski, are those kind of measures reasonable? Uh, I mean, it's obviously a civil liberties issue, but do you think it's necessary at this point? 
Yeah, that's a good point, PK. Um, look, the first duty of any government is the safety of its people. Um, it is quite, you know, Australian Chief Medical Officers, um, it would not surprise or may surprise some of your viewers to know, have some of the most extreme powers under laws anywhere in Australia. So if the Chief Medical Officer um, declares an epidemic, he can literally shut down entire cities. Um, the South Australian law is simply bringing the South Australian government and the state of South Australia in line with other laws that exist in other parts of Australia. I'm um, surprised that it wasn't already on the books, um, but these laws have an important purpose. Uh, they are used obviously only in the rarest of times, and you are quite right to point out the civil liberty, the problems with civil liberties when you have laws like these on the books, and that is why Parliament ultimately need to review them after each incident and ensure that they are not misused. Josh Burns, what is your take on that? I mean, as explained by Jason, it would bring it into line with the rest of the laws, but should they always be reviewed? Is it something that you agree with? Oh, look, I haven't seen the legislation um, and I haven't seen um, the details in this. Um, obviously, I'm sure that my South Australian counterparts would be looking at them now and and talking to the government about the best way to manage this difficult crisis. I think more broadly I'd make the point that this is difficult, these are really difficult issues. Um, what we need is calm, what we need is leadership, um, we need the governments um, to be listening to the advice of the health experts, to be treating this as a health issue um, and if that means bringing in laws and bringing in things to make people safe um, or to give us the best chance of dealing with this then, then those things obviously need to be considered in a calm and sober way. And just some breaking news that we will also try to authenticate, but the Sydney Morning Herald is reporting that health authorities have confirmed the first person-to-person -person transmission of the coronavirus in Australia. This is the first case of an individual contracting the virus in Australia. Now, all previous 28 Australian cases were people who were infected while they were travelling overseas. So Jason Flinsky, as we say, um, we're waiting for official confirmation, but this is being reported by the Sydney Morning Herald. How concerned are you by this potential development? Well, obviously very concerned. Um, I, I, however, hasten to stress, and I'm sure Josh agrees, that we shouldn't indulge in rampant speculation. Um, the Herald is a credible source of information, but we should wait to have that confirmed. Um, often uh, in the past we've found that we thought there was person-to-person -person transfer of diseases only to find out that um, the initial consultation missed important um, parts of their history or travel um, or travel itinerary. So we we need to just um, be very calm about this. However, if um, we've had the first person to person transfer, then that is obviously a matter of grave concern to the government and uh, something that um, we are well prepared for. Uh, Josh, I'll give you a right of reply on that, although you can you can decline the opportunity given it's just breaking. Uh, I, 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 I haven't seen the article, but I think unfortunately this is going to get worse before it gets better. Um, that there are going to be cases that Australia, while you know geographically we do have an advantage, um, th this is going to come to our shores, I, I, I believe, and um, and that's why we need to be prepared. That's why we'll be working with the government um, to make sure that we have calm and steady leadership on this to be as prepared as we possibly can be um, and to make sure Australians have all of the support that they need. Let's just talk about the economy briefly before I let you go. Jason Falinski, it's likely the RBA will cut the cash rate tomorrow amid the spread of coronavirus. We've seen the reaction from the markets. We've seen uh, what, what we've been hearing from the Treasurer and the Prime Minister in relation to potential surplus. Would you support a rates cut? Do you think that's what might be necessary at this stage? Um, look, I don't think we have enough information. Well, sorry, let me start again. The RBA has a lot more information than I do on this matter. Um, it is sometimes sensible to take preventative action uh, in the monetary policy sense. Um, often in the past when that has occurred, it hasn't turned out that well. Uh, what I would say is that the IMF has um, issued uh, downgrading growth of 0.1% globally from 3.3 to 3.2%. The truth is I don't think we know fully yet what the impact of the coronavirus will be on the global economy. We have very complex supply chains now. Um, they are obviously convulsing at the moment as different production centres and manufacturing centres and service centres for that matter deal with this virus and the impact that it's having. Um, I don't think that we should um, uh, throw the switch to panic. Uh, as Josh was just saying a moment ago, we should deal with these issues soberly. Um, ultimately, this is a decision for the RBA to make, but um, I don't think we're at that point yet, but um, they are uh, 
they have a lot more information to hand than I do. And should the government unveil stimulus measures if the economic hit from coronavirus worsens, Jason Falinski? You know, the Prime Minister has uh, just a couple of days ago for the first time put that on the table. Is that something that you would expect? Look, as I, as I just said, Patricia, this is um, this is something that's unfolding. We don't know its full impact as of yet. Uh, when we do, we need to respond as quickly and agilely as we possibly can. We will do that. It is fortunate that we have managed our finances in a manner and form that we have the headroom to do that. Um, I don't think us um, headlessly going out and spending other people's money on projects that don't make sense is the way for us to proceed. I think what is important is that we... Um, keep a watching brief on what's going on and respond as necessary where necessary. Josh, Labor was arguing for economic stimulus from last year. Do you think yep. the government made the right call not, not to use that money at that stage? Uh, what's your assessment of the fact that, you know, they're saying, hang on a minute, we're in a better situation now. We would have, we would have misspent if we'd, if we'd gone in as Labor wanted us to last year. Uh, the thing that the government did last year was create mugs saying that they were back in the black. Um, obviously that's not true. Um, what we also need to remember is that the RBA had lowered interest rates to record low levels before the bushfires before the coronavirus hit, our economy was already weakening. You only have to look at the retail figures, consumer confidence, stagnated wages, the cost of living going up. Um, all of the um, major economic institutions were calling for stimulus before the bushfires, before the coronavirus. And now things are obviously um, become even more challenging. Um, it is even more desperate. And today we are hearing reports that small businesses in bushfire affected communities aren't getting access to the wage support um, programs that they so desperately need that the government is sitting on their hands and getting funds out to the most affected communities from our bushfires, let alone our businesses affected by the coronavirus. Um, I, I would say that what right now we have a government who is, has been sitting on their hands, who hasn't been given the economy the attention it deserves, who's been doing nothing um, in order to protect their back in the black mugs, and they are now paying the price for it, and so are the Australian people. Just finally, before I let you go, last week uh, the ASIO boss gave a pretty significant speech and, and the term right-wing extremism was used. One of your colleagues, Jason Falinski, Conchetta for Avanti Wells, has taken issue with the use of, use of right wing uh, in relation to this, saying, you know, it's offensive, essentially, I'm paraphrasing here very clearly, but to conservatives. Do you see it that way? No, I don't. I, I, look, I haven't read Conchetta's remarks, so I don't, I can't critique them. But look, I think um, extremism of any form uh, is of a problem, is problematic to any democracy, whether here or overseas. Um, we have seen in Germany where, frankly, they didn't respond to some of the more extreme elements in their political system soon enough, um, more re most recently, and now they're responding to it and they're doing a good job. I think it's, it's incredibly important that we are aware of violence against any other Australian. As I say, the first duty of any government is the safety of its people, and extremists throughout the ages have always threatened the safety of other citizens in order to pursue their own political purposes. That's not how Australia works. That's not how this government's going to allow Australia to work. Now, you can call it brindle extremism, if you like, or purple extremism, if you want. No, I don't the, really the care. Name's important. Extremism, the name's extremism extremism of any sort needs to be monitored and dealt with um, and that's what this government will do. Josh, you're saying that the language is important here? Absolutely it is, PK. Um, these are groups of neo-right, um, right-wing fascists who are organising. They are not operating in the dark web, as the Minister for Home Affairs likes to say. They are operating on Facebook. They are operating in our communities. Um, uh, you know, we, we, we know where they are and we know what they are talking about. They are talking about an ideology, um, things like the replacement theory of people coming to mainstream Western societies, replacing white people in those societies. These are bigoted views and we need to be very clear about what they are. They are far-right extremists, they are organised and they are coming after our societies, they're coming after our institutions and you only have to look at the fact that they came after recruitment in the National Party. I want to um, leave it Sorry, there. what? Well, what? OK. What does that suggest you? Jason... Jason, well, if you look last year, the Nationals, the Nationals had young, had far I mean, right. Once no, again, the Labor mate. Party and is taking a absolutely serious issue and politicising <laughs> it. I just, I, I'm just. Uh, Jason, anyway. if you. 
Jason, okay. the Nationals did the right thing and kicked these people out, yeah, but that's... they were trying to recruit in the, nas in the okay, National I Party last year. I think that's an year. important part of the story, though, to be fair, that um, they weren't successful, Absolutely. but they, but their attempts were there, but they weren't successful, I think, Absolutely. Um, just to Absolutely. correct the record there. But thank you to both of you for